Hello, welcome to the session. In the previous session, we looked at how to change the output frequency in a simple ring oscillator, uh, where we use differential cells and we varied the resistance, we retained the output swing. Now we are going to see uh, what happens to this uh, delay cell in the ring oscillator when you have supply noise. Okay, so in the presence of let us understand supply noise, uh, supply noise effect on oscillator, the one which we have discussed before, the oscillator which we have discussed before. So, in our case, we had a simple cell like this as we see, uh, well this was the first design which we used, where we used a poly or physical resistor here, not a voltage control. As soon as you have voltage control, things change. Okay. So, we have uh, input here and VOP and VON and now let us consider that you are having a supply noise. Okay. This is VDD and you have V in here, supply noise. So, what happens is when you have supply noise, which is I mean this wiggle here, your VOP and VON are going to change. At any given instant of time, if you have IB current here and the current in one branch can be IB, IB by 2 plus delta I and the other branch then it is going to be IB by 2 minus delta I. So, the voltages which you are going to have at VOP and VON, let me just write it, that is going to be VDD, VDD plus VN if you want to write it, VDD plus VN minus IB by 2 minus delta I times R and VON is VDD plus VN minus IB by 2 plus delta I times R. This is the case when the resistance value remains fixed. So, if you look at the differential output swing, right, you do not have any effect of Vn on the output swing. And if you do not have any effect of Vn on the output waveform, uh, oscillator output waveform, you have no effect on the noise or no effect on the jitter or the phase noise from the oscillator also. So, here if you look at it VOP minus VON is nothing but 2 times delta I times R. It was the same before without the noise also. Now, when you have, when this resistor is replaced by a MOSFET, right, no matter which way you are biasing with V control or something. So, when you bias this particular MOSFET, then what happens is your VOP is VDD plus VN, this is a still not an issue, minus your current which is flowing, the current uh, difference is coming from the input transistor. So, IB by 2 minus delta I the resistance is a function of the voltage and the current. Okay? So, it I call this as VR and IR. What is this VR and IR? Well, if you take a MOSFET and you have a voltage difference at the source and drain node, this is the VR and the current which is flowing through the transistor is IR. So, we have seen earlier that the equivalent resistance of the MOSFET has uh, or has a dependency on the voltage difference across it that was VSD and the current through it, right. So, now VOP and VON what do you see here that has VN minus IB by 2 plus delta I and the resistance VR dash and IR dash because for the left and right side, your resistance is going to your voltage difference across the drain and source node, source and drain nodes that is going to vary. 
and since these two values are not equal, so VOP minus VON is not going to be equal to 2 times delta IR as it was in the case when you were using uh, passive resistors. Okay? So, this is a problem. So, all the noise which you get, this particular noise gets converted to your uh, supply noise that gets, you will see that noise at the output and that is also going to affect the phase noise. So, to address that problem, uh, Maniat has proposed a kind of a symmetric load, right? And with the help of that symmetric load, we could actually uh, get a supply noise rejection. Okay. So, let me first, let us first understand what is this symmetric load. Uh, so, let me just write it as cement. In place of simple voltage controlled MOSFET, we are going to use a symmetric load and the symmetric load is like this. You have two PMOS. One PMOS is controlled by a control voltage VCTRL and the other PMOS is controlled, is connected or you can say the drain and source are shorted. This is VDD. This I am just drawing the current, the total current drawn from this load is IR. The potential difference between the VDD and the output node is VR. Okay? Both the MOSFETs have same size, right? Now, this MOSFET operates under uh, different conditions. So, let me just write this as MP1 and MP2. So, in case 1, you can say when your VR is quite low, that means when your VR is even lesser than mod VTP, at that time, your MP2 transistor will be turned off because uh, VSG minus uh, mod VTP for that transistor is uh, VR is actually equal to VSG of the MP2 transistor, right? So, if VSG is less than mod VTP, the transistor is not on and MP1 will only be on and MP1 will be, MP1 will operate in linear region. Okay. This is one case and MP2 is turned off. We are not considering the subthreshold conduction here. Okay. Then the case 2 will be, this MOSFET operates in different cases so that uh, first we understand that and then we will look at the current versus the voltage profile. When your VR is greater than mod VTP but less than there will be another condition and that condition is that it should be less than VDD minus V control minus mod VTP. So, what will happen when VR increases more than mod VTP, your MP2 transistor is in saturation okay, and MP1 is in linear region of operation. Okay. Then what is going to happen when case 3, when your VR is greater than VDD minus V control minus mod VTP, all the transistor, both the transistor will operate in saturation region. So, I will say VR is greater than equal to VDD minus V control minus mod VTP. P. Both transistors are in saturation. So, you see depending on the swing available at this node, the drain node, your transistors are in saturation region. Right? Your current is going to vary. So, if I go and plot IR versus VR, I have given the range, the region of operation. You can actually find out this uh, value. So, this is going to be depending on the control voltage. What we have, you will see a characteristics like this.
okay. And I am just writing let us say this is for V control 1. So, I R versus I R versus V R character 6 are shown in this or they will turn out to be like this. The interesting thing for these characteristics is that if you look from the midpoint, right, then if you go minus delta i down or you go plus delta i up. So, this is going delta i up then this is going delta i down from this point, right. You pick up these points. The slope of I R versus V R or the resistance value which you know. So, the resistance is not only calculated as V by I for a nonlinear device you are going to calculate resistance as derivative of that nonlinear function. So, here the resistance is the slope at this point and here the resistance is the slope at this point. Okay. You see that for the change in the current plus delta i and minus delta i and for the different voltages v r 1 and v r 2 the slope remains the same. Okay. Now, this is the interesting part how if I use this uh, miniatis cell load in our as a actual load in the oscillator cell then my cell will be something like this. Okay. So, here I am going to have n MOS load connected in this manner. You can find the control voltage in the same way as you found for the replica such that the output swing remains constant. We are using miniatis cell with a spe uh, specific purpose of reducing the supply noise effect on the output. So, I am not uh, going to the biasing for uh, fixed output swing right now. So, I give this V control here and V control here. We have this uh, I p and I n and you can have the capacitive load as desired right. Uh, this is V o p, this is V o n. So, what we do this is bias voltage V b i b. So, at any given time you have i b by 2 plus delta i and here you are going to have i b by 2 minus delta i, right. So, for these currents you know that these voltages will be different, okay. And the, uh, the equivalent resistance of each cell, this cell and this cell, right. It depends on the potential V R 1 across them. So, the example which we took this potential let us say is V R 1 and this potential is V R okay, minus delta i I took yeah this is V R 2 and this is V R 1. Where do you have minus delta i I took V R 1. So, with these potential differences you see the slope is the same. Now, if the slope is the same the resistance value is going to be same. So, I just need to rewrite these equations when you have supply noise. This is V d d, this is V n. So, what we have here is uh, I p by 2 minus delta i that is i r or minus delta i is V r 1 and I r 1 let us call that and this is V r 2 and I r 2 right. And this resistance value is the slope as you see at these points the slope is same. So, since we have V r 1 times I r 1 equal to r times V r 2 times I r 2 this implies that V o p minus V o n v o n is going to be delta i times r. Okay. So, your supply noise is not affecting the resistance it is getting actually cancelled out. Right. 
the supply noise when we are talking about the supply noise you are talking about your VDD, VN changing your VR1 and VR2. It affects both of them in the same manner. Okay. So, by using the symmetric load in the oscillator or this miniatis cell in the oscillator, we can get a better suppression of the supply noise to the output. Okay. Thank you.